All right, welcome back everybody. Again, my name is Nick. This is Swipple Thinking. We are almost done with this playlist. So we're getting very close. Um, don't slack on me yet, but this might be the last video or maybe there's like one or two more. The next playlist after this, if you're just learning to code, I would say the next playlist after this should be the Swift UI Bootcamp. And in Swift UI, anytime you create any screen, the screen conforms to the view protocol. And that's basically the reason that I'm creating this video. So protocols themselves, I would consider a advanced topic. If you're just learning to code, I don't expect you to make your own protocols for a very long time. I literally built apps without ever writing a protocol. So it's not something that you really need to know right now, but I wanna give you guys just a very high level introduction to what a protocol is, because for the entire SwiftUI bootcamp, every single view in SwiftUI is gonna to conform to this protocol. So I want you guys to just have like a, a glimpse, just a little bit of understanding of what it means to conform to a protocol and what is the actual code that you're gonna have in the next 100 files that you create. So we're gonna do a really quick introduction to protocols here. I have a more advanced protocol video on my channel. It's in the advanced learning playlist. If you're just learning, I don't think you need to check it out right now, but if you are interested, it's a great video. Anyway, with that said, let's jump into the code. We're gonna write our first protocol and then we're gonna literally hands-on look at a Swift UI view. We are basically done with this playlist. I wanna just do one final video that is absolutely not a beginner thing that you need to know, but it's something that you're gonna see in the code a lot, and I want you to just understand what it is you're looking at. So anytime you write SwiftUI code, every single SwiftUI view conforms to a protocol. And I wanna just very briefly explain how protocols work, just so you know what that code is, because you're gonna be seeing it every single video in the next playlist if you follow the SwiftUI bootcamp. So let's right click the navigator, create a new playground page and call this protocols. Now I'm gonna delete this and again, Protocols are a very advanced thing to learn in Swift. I do not expect you to be creating protocols or really understanding them at a deep level yet. I just want to show you what they are. All right, so here let's create another struct and let's call this maybe employee. So maybe we have an app that's a company app and there are employee data models in the app. So let's call this employee model. Every employee is going to have a title of type string and maybe every employee will have a name of type string. All right, really quickly, I just wanna show you guys. Right now, this struct does not conform to any protocols. A protocol is just a list of rules or requirements that an object has to follow. So we're gonna create our first protocol ever here. And again, I don't expect you to create protocols for a very long time in your coding career. I just wanna show you this very high level. We're going to create a protocol and call this employee has a name. Now this is going to be basically a rule. Anything that conforms to this protocol must have whatever we put in here. And I'm going to say maybe it has to have a name of type string. So this struct does not conform to this protocol, but if we add the conformance like this, we can see that this struct now conforms to employee has a name. And nothing is breaking in our code because obviously this struct does have a name that is of type string. Now, if I said this struct conforms to this, but I didn't actually have the name in there, we're going to get this quick error. Let's try to run this. And we're going to get an error here that my employee model does not actually conform to the protocol employee has a name. So this is just a set of rules. And then when you create an object, it doesn't have to be a struct, it could be a class, it could be anything else. We can conform to a protocol. And if we conform to the protocol, we then need to add everything in our code to support those rules. So if the rule is that it has to have a name of type string, then this object must have a name of type string. Okay. 
Okay, so that is basically all I want to show you guys about protocols. And that's because when we start actually making views, every single view will conform to some protocol. And I wanted you to just understand what that means. So I'm just going to show that to you real quick, just so you're not totally confused about what I'm talking about here. Let's actually just check that out and how it's going to look when we start writing our actual app. So I'm going to come up here and create and click file new and let's create a new project. So in this playlist, we used a playground, but a project is how we actually create an app. And then I'm going to double click on app here. So multi-platform and double click on app. And I'm just going to name this my test app. because so we're not going to actually build this right now. I'm going to discuss all of what to put here in the next playlist. Let's not worry about it right now. Click next and just save it wherever you want on your computer. All right, let's open this up. And I'm going to actually comment this, all of this out. So I'm going to highlight it all and then press hold command and press the forward slash. And this was like the template code that it gave us. But if we started a file from scratch and we wanted to create our first view, so we would create a struct, let's call it content view. And let's open the brackets. Now in order, you can see here, in order for this to be a view, we need to conform to the view protocol. So up here, I'm going to create my new struct and conform to the view protocol. Now, when I do this, I'm going to get an error from the compiler that's saying, Hey, you're saying that you conform to the view protocol, but we don't actually see that you are conforming to it. So the same way here, we said employee has a name. You need to have a name in order to conform to this protocol. Here it's saying you're conforming to this protocol, but you're not actually fitting the requirements. So the requirements of the view protocol is that the view has a body. So if we look at this code again, there's a variable called body that is of type sum of view. And let's just put that into this struct here. And I'm just going to put in here a text that says, hello world. All right. So this is, I'm going to delete all this. This is the basis of how we're going to create every single Swift UI view. Every view in Swift UI is a struct that conforms to the view protocol. And to conform to the view protocol, that just means that the struct has a variable called body that is of type some view. That's all I wanted to get at in this video. I don't expect you to actually make protocols or even really understand them, but just know that when we write this for the next 50 videos, that's what we're doing here. We're conforming to the view protocol. All right, I'm gonna X this out. Again, if you've just watched this playlist and you liked it, I highly recommend watching the Swift UI Bootcamp on my channel. So the Swift UI Bootcamp, this is the first bootcamp that I put on YouTube. I put it out two years ago, but it is still very relevant. I've had some people ask if things are maybe outdated. I can confirm to you guys that they are not. There's like one or two videos where some things are slightly deprecated, but at the end of the playlist, I've actually appended videos to show you all of the updated versions of anything that is deprecated. So if you liked this playlist, I highly recommend checking out this one next because this playlist is all about actually creating the screens. So we're going to add text to the screens, add shapes and colors, and that is a whole lot more fun than the stuff that we did in this playlist. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this playlist. This was a introduction to the Swift programming language. And I would say the next step in your journey should be learning Swift UI so that you can actually build the UI for an application. Thank you guys for choosing Swiftful Thinking. I appreciate it so much. You could have learned to code anywhere online, and I am extremely honored to take you through this process. Learning to code is definitely a challenging task, but it doesn't have to be that hard. And my hope is that Swiftful Thinking makes it a little bit easier. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. Join our Discord if you have questions. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.